Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about some spatial concepts. We're going to be looking at 1.4. Now we're going to do something a little different here. Before we get started into the video, what I want you to do is take about 10 seconds and answer the following questions. Okay, so there was a bunch of different ways that you could have answered those three questions. But I bet if we actually compared all of your answers, we could see some themes and trends. For example, I bet the first two questions, most of you talked about businesses that were close to you or took a very little amount of time to get to. And if your answer had to do with a business that was farther away or took longer, I bet it was a business that was pretty specialized, that has a big pull factor. And I bet there's also other things around it that would make you want to go to that business. For the third question, I bet a lot of you thought about how often you talk to people over the internet, social media, your phones, or how easy it is now to communicate with businesses and people that are far away from you. All right, now I know some of you are thinking, Mr. Sin, what is the point of these questions and these answers? It's not that hard to predict exactly what we would have talked about. It makes sense that we'd go to the closest place. And you're right, these answers weren't hard to predict, but they all connect back to spatial concepts. Waldo Tobler, who created the first law of geography, once said, everything is related to everything else but near things are more related than distance things what he meant by this is things and people and businesses that are closer to us we're more likely to interact with farther away something is or someone is the less likely we are to interact with it that's because of distance decay further something gets away from you well you're gonna have more frictional distance you're going to have more barriers more obstacles and that'll prevent you from interacting that's why a lot of long-distance relationships don't work it's distance decay. So that's why for your first two answers, if you were thinking about a place that was close to you or took a very short amount of time to get to, you're following Tobler's first law. Now over time, we've seen the amount of distance decay decrease, and that's because of advancements in technology and communication. People today are able to talk to people whenever they want. They're able to connect with businesses that are further away from them. And so we're starting to see a concept known as space-time compression. Essentially what it means is the world feels smaller today. We are now more connected, and we're more likely to interact with things that are farther away. And this is why for question three, you probably thought about social media or Amazon or things with the internet just in general. Now, we don't even have to go over and visit our friend's house, which is great, because no one has actual time for that anymore. Now, whenever we talk about spatial concepts, we have to talk about spatial association. This is looking at how are things arranged inside a place? How are people interacting? How are they moving? Where are things located? Objects located within a space? Are there patterns that we can see? Now when we're talking about patterns in geography, what we're talking about is how are objects arranged in a room? How are they arranged in a geographic area? And another concept you're gonna hear is space. Sometimes space is referencing the place itself, but oftentimes too, what it's actually referencing is the amount of space in between objects. By understanding these two concepts, we can gain a better understanding of a place with just looking at it. Here, let me paint a picture for you to better understand. All right, whoo, set the scene. It's the first day of school. You walk into your classroom, you're naturally super excited because it's the first day of school, and you notice that all of your desks are in straight rows. They're all facing forward and they're spaced out between each other. Your friend, however, walks in first day of school as well. They're super excited and they notice that all their desks in their classroom are all in pods. All the desks are grouped together. None of them are just facing the front of the room. They're facing each other and they're sitting in groups of four to six students for each pod. Now, what right away do you think of for both classrooms? The only information you have right now is the arrangement, the pattern of the room. You don't know the teacher, you don't know the subject, you don't know anything else. All you know is where the desks are located and how they're arranged. What does that tell you about that place? What does it tell you about the room? Can you make inferences of how your school year is gonna go? For that first room, I bet you thought about taking a test, quizzes, notes. Maybe you thought it's gonna be more difficult, less enjoyable possibly. You're gonna sit there, you're gonna listen to the teacher, you're gonna take notes, you're looking forward at all times. For the other one though, the one with the pods, you might have thought of talking with people, working on group projects, hands-on learning. Maybe it is more fun, or maybe if you don't like learning that way, it isn't. But these would help you understand a sense of place without even having to know anything else about it. The arrangement matters. It can paint visuals in your mind, and it allows you to better understand a geographic area. All of these are spatial concepts. Also, when we look at the arrangement of objects within a geographic area, we could try to better understand the flow, the movement of people, ideas, goods, services. And we can see that certain places are designed to promote certain activities. 
Certain classrooms are designed to create more students moving around the room, while others are set up in a way to try and keep students in one spot. The next time you're in your school, for example, when you're walking down the halls, look around. Where are the lockers located? Where are certain barriers put up? How is the school set up? All of these different things impact how we move around our day-to-day -day lives. And you would be amazed at how much time and effort goes into designing buildings and landscapes to try and promote certain activities. The last concepts you need to understand for 1.4 are absolute location and relative location. When you're thinking of absolute location, I want you to think of longitude and latitude, pinpoint location. Think of your phone actually, GPS. That spot, that place is never gonna change. Those coordinates will always be the same. Relative location on the other hand is going to describe a location by using objects in the place. Oftentimes relying on physical characteristics or human characteristics of a place. These two characteristics are what give places their identity and it's how we're able to describe location. When thinking of physical characteristics, think of rivers, mountains, vegetation, or the climate. When you're thinking of the human characteristics, think of religion, the gender breakdown, language, all these different demographic factors. Those would give the human characteristics of a place. Physical and human characteristics together create a sense of place. A sense of place is that feeling you get or the perception of a location. For example, when you're in your home city, it feels like home. Chewing. Home. It has a unique identity and all of these form based on the different characteristics that are unique to that place. Just like that, the summary for 1.4 is complete. Now you know the drill, it's time to test your knowledge. Take the practice quiz. You can see the questions on the screen now. Don't forget to check your answers in the comment section below. And again, if you found value in this video and you need more help with AP Human Geography, make sure to subscribe. It helps support the channel and can help you do better in your class. Also, if you are struggling in your class, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that goes over all the units of AP Human Geography, and it can help you get a five on the national exam and an A in your class. All right, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, geographers. And until next time, I'll see you online.